This is just going to be a kind of a quick review for you guys. It's complex numbers. Uh, the, these are the two main things that you need to know for this section. The two big concepts are this. We give meaning to having negative, negative radicands inside your square roots. So we define the square root of negative 1 to equal what? I. I. And remember, this guy is called the imaginary unit. Okay? That's your imaginary unit. And the reason this equals i is because we're also going to define mm -hmm. this that goes along with that, that i squared equals negative 1. These are the two huge concepts that you must know to be successful in this section and in this class. Okay? So let's see what you guys do remember. Remember we had this guy before, the square root of negative 25? You guys were telling me from memory that you remember this guy to be 5i. And the reason this is 5i is because we can see this as inside the radical negative 1 times 25. But of course that means the square root of negative 1 <coughs> times the square root of 25. Now, we just said what the square root of negative 1 is going to be defined to be. And we know that the square root of 25 is 5, so this is 5i. <coughs> that is multiplication between those two, and you can treat i as though it is a variable. So if you have i times i, what would that give you? i i squared. Just like if you have x times x, that gives you what? <coughs> x squared, right? I love the way you guys look at me like it's, this is all brand new. I guess I should not say I love the way you look at me like that because that's a lie. It very makes, makes me sad if I had a heart. What about the square root of negative 300? What would you guys, is 300 a perfect square? No, so I've got to find a way to break that down in a way that's useful. <coughs> Three times 100, that's right. If your mind's on your money and your money's on your mind, you know that's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> so this is 3 times 100. That's nice. So this gives me what on the outside? It gives me a 10. But don't forget, there is this negative factor inside, and what does that contribute? That contributes the I, and who's left inside the radical? Three. Write your answers like this and not like this. Now, although these guys appear to have the same meaning, and they do here, sometimes we get a little careless <coughs> and our radical extends over the I. We accidentally include that in the radical. Don't do that. It's, it's not good. So that way, so that we can avoid any kind of ambiguity with the way you write your answers, we're going to write the I in front of the radical. Anything that simplifies out of the radical goes in front. You with me? And this is understood to be multiplication there. Now you're going to have problems if you try to check this on your graph and calculator. Do you know why? So is 300 a perfect square? No. It's not a perfect square. So if I were to try to type in the square root of negative 300, it gives me this guy right here. You see the i at the end. So I know it's imaginary. But I mean, here's what you should do to make sure that you are on the right track. Did I simplify this correctly? If I type in 10 square roots of 3, this result should be the same as the decimal portion of my answer. And, and you see that it is. The only thing, of course, missing is the i. Of course, I did this without the i. So that's the way that you can check to make sure that things are simplified correctly. Earlier, we had the square root of 242. And it gives me that decimal. How did we simplify the square root of 242? Do you remember? 
121 times 2 inside the radical, so that gives you <coughs> the square root of 121 is 11, square roots of 2, and I get the same decimal. And you know that you can't break down the 2 inside the radical anymore. So that's the way for us to check our work and make sure that we're on the right track. Okay. Now some calculators will be able to simplify that symbolically, which means you know, whatever you type in, it will give you a simplified answer. Or you can convert it to a decimal. <coughs> Let's try this problem right here. Love those negatives. What do we get? I disagree with negative two. You want the final answer or you want to step by step? Well, what would you do here? What's the thought process? Well, you got eight and two. This guy does break down as eight times two. Why'd you do eight times two? Because you need a, a cube, perfect. Oh, this is a cube root, right? So, what's the cube root of eight? Two. 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 What stays inside the cube root? Just the two. two. What'd you do with the negative? Two I. Oh, the I? Oh wait, I gotta. I just want to back up in this video a little bit. Where does i come from? It comes from the square root of negative one, right? <coughs> but look at this problem. Is this a square root? Mm. It's a cube uh, root. Can I have negatives yeah. inside of a cube root or inside of odd indexed radicals? Yes. Yeah. What's the cube root of a negative number? Negative. negative. No i. It's kind of tricky, right? Because if you look at negative 16, you could say this is negative 8 times 2, and negative 8 is a perfect cube. Got to watch out for those signs.